Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul, and you may have heard the news by now, but if not, let me just share with you. NVIDIA has released their latest series of GPUs. The code name has been Kepler up till now, but this is going to be known as the GeForce GTX 600 series, and the first GPU to launch in that series is the GTX 680. The good folks over at EVGA have been kind enough to provide us our very own GeForce GTX 680 right here that we can use to test and benchmark. So that's what I've been working on all day today, some benchmarking of this card. We actually got two of them to test in SLI. So uh, I'm gonna be sharing you get with some benchmarks with you guys today. I will be providing some comparisons to the GTX 580, and we're gonna share that with you in some slides. Uh, but first off, let's go over just some of the details of the GTX 680 itself. So here's a closer look, and this is uh, what amounts to a reference design card uh, as determined by NVIDIA for most of the uh, uh, board manufacturing partners that they work with. Uh, again, this is an EVGA version, but you, as you can see on the PCB down there at the bottom, there is an NVIDIA logo directly on the PCB. So most of the 680s you'll see right at launch will be very, 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 very similar to this one. Uh, that being said, again, this is uh, the Kepler GPU, now known as the GeForce GTX 600 series. Uh, the specific GPU that's residing underneath this, uh, right underneath that, that little portion right there, is uh, codenamed GK104. That's the core GPU. It has 1,536 CUDA cores built in, uh, and it, it works, it <laughs> operates at uh, 1,006 megahertz core clock frequency. Now, it has a pretty cool feature called boost clock. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Intel and AMD CPUs, they can do this too. Uh, Intel calls it turbo boost, but basically, uh, when the GPU is idling, it will run at a lower clock speed, and then when you put a load on it, it will boost up the clock speed. So 1,006 megahertz is the core clock uh, that it will run at um, while the computer is idle, and then when you have a load, it will jump up to 1,058 megahertz. So uh, a nice little boost there. It'll give you a few extra frames per second in the games you're playing and whatnot. Uh, you also get a 2 gigabyte DDR5 uh, memory buffer in the card. It uh, operates on a 256-bit interface, and it runs at 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, this is also a PCI Express Gen 3 card, so it is, com is compatible with uh, PCIe Gen 3. Uh, we will be using a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard to test it with today, uh, and that simply provides you some additional bandwidth, which uh, the card really can't saturate at this point, but uh, it does give you some future proofedness. I'm making up words now. Uh, finally, for power requirements, you only need two 6-pin PCI Express power uh, adapters for the GTX 680, and that is because it it comes in at a low, low TDP of 195 watts. So let's take a look at our test bed. So here's a quick look at our test bed, just to give you guys an idea. Uh, there is our other GTX 680. It's currently up and running on the board. Uh, speaking of the board, there's our test bed motherboard, which is an uh, X79 motherboard, the Sabertooth X79 from Asus. Uh, underneath this cooler here is our CPU, which is an Intel Core i7-3960X Sandy Bridge E. That's just running at stock frequencies right now. Uh, we have four total sticks. Uh, the other two are on the other side of that that uh, heat sink there, but uh, four sticks of Corsair Vengeance memory when it, running at 1600 mega transfers per second. Uh, we have a Samsung 830 SSD for our operating system install, and we have a Thermaltake Tough Power 1350 watt power supply. Oh, I should also mention our cooler is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. So now we're ready for some benchmarks, and I should start off by saying that what do you do when you're benchmarking a card a day before it actually launches, which is what we're doing today? Uh, the solution is you use the drivers that come on the disk, which usually is not advisable. Uh, the driver version we're using is 300.83 from NVIDIA. That is what ships on the uh, disk with the video card. Uh, NVIDIA, chances are, will be releasing an updated driver probably on launch day, and then they'll probably be coming out with uh, incremental updates after then. So get the latest drivers, you'll get better performance. You'll probably get better performance than you see in my benchmark numbers here. That being said, uh, let's first off take a look at our 3D Mark 11 benchmarks. There you can see three columns of information. We have the uh, single car GTX 580, a single GTX 680, and then two GTX 680s in SLI. Uh, I wanted to point out here the GTX 580 scores that I'm showing are from a Zotac Infinity GTX 580, which is a water-cooled GTX 580. I kept the temperatures in there because I did want to also show the temps for the 680, uh, but temps on the water-cooled Zotac version are um, 
at least a few degrees lower than your typical air-cooled GTX 580. That being said, uh, we can see the performance jump up from the single 580 to the single 680. We got a good 20% uh, or so increase there. And then SLI scaling and 3D Mark 11, very good with the 680. Um, we're looking at almost 90 to 90% uh, 90 plus SLI scaling, uh, especially in the Extreme Edition, going from 2747 up to X5405. Next up, we're going to move on to 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, again, here we got the 580, 680, and double 680. Uh, this 3D Mark Vantage is more of a direct X10 test, so uh, this is more representative of some of the older games that you might play. Uh, but performance mode, we hit 34,600 for the 680. Uh, when we added the second card, we hit 45,000. Not quite as good SLI scaling with this, but uh, it's not able to take advantage of some of the direct X11 features with these benchmarks. Uh, still, uh, temperature is well within range, and I should mention that while running all of these tests, the cards remained very quiet. The fans only had to ramp up once or twice when it got over 80 degrees Celsius. And even when the fan speed did jump up, it really was not that much louder than when it was just running at its typical RPMs. Next up, we have Unigen Heaven 2.5. And uh, we actually ran two versions of the Heaven test. I ran 2.5 because that's what I had. I ran when I had the GTX 580. So here you can see the comparison numbers between those. And uh, we also ran Unigen Heaven 3.0, which we're going to come back to in just a second. Uh, but again, for the uh, number comparison here, I was able to run this at 1920 by 1200, and then also at 2560 by 1600. And if you are looking at a higher end video card, if you really want to push it and see what kind of performance you can get running at that higher resolution is a great way to do that. Uh, before we move on to the last test, I did want to point out one other awesome feature of the GTX 680, and that is that with a single card, you can actually push up to four displays. You can use three of those displays for 3D gaming, and then you can have the fourth display set above or below or off to the side, wherever you want, and you can use that as a companion display, so you can pull up web pages or maybe an instant messenger app or... Any, anything like that. Uh, you can have up there and running while you're gaming. So really cool that you can do that much with a single card and uh, to that end I wanted to do some triple monitor um, testing with this card. So I went ahead and set up uh, Unigen Heaven 3.0 which does uh, include multiple monitor testing. Uh, for that I wasn't able to compare to the 580 but I do have comparisons here of the 680 versus the 680 in SLI. So as you can see with single monitor running at the uh, typical uh, gaming resolution of 1920 by 1080. We hit 75 frames per second with the single card, jumped up to 134.8 frames per second uh, with the two cards. And then uh, when we jumped up to three monitors running at 5760 by 1080 resolution, we had 27.1 average frames per second for the 680 and 49.5 average frames per second with the 680 and two card SLI. I would have loved to have kept running benchmarks on this video card for another day to give you guys more games to test, but uh, we were a little bit time limited, so uh, what you see is what you get. I ran the synthetic benchmark so we could give you guys more of a direct numbers comparison between uh, the last generation 580 and this 680 right here. Now there are more uh, video cards in the 600 series yet to be released, so you, can get, you guys can be looking forward to that. We will be continuing to uh, show you guys some more of the features of this card, particularly as updated drivers come out. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I did want to say a huge thank you to EVGA for providing me with this video card for the benchmark and testing as well as the other one over there in the test bed. And uh, that is going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Once again, this has been the EVGA GTX 680, I should say NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 video card benchmarking tests. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.